Hello everybody, Mr. Antifree here. I have the next part in my series, Believer vs. Skeptics. Every time I think I'm done, or have covered everything and can wrap it up, I find more. What I'm going to be talking about today is when the Believer and Skeptic clash. And in this case, it's the same group. The setting for this is 1755 Lisbon in the Kingdom of Portugal. It is a Saturday about 9 o'clock. It is November 1st, All Saints Day. A holy day where Catholics honor the dead. It's about 9 o'clock Everybody's in church, and the ground starts to shake. The ground continues to rumble for more than six minutes. Churches collapse, buildings collapse, fires start, and then a short while later, a tsunami hits. Lisbon had just had a mega thrust earthquake, very similar to the Christmas earthquake in the Indian Ocean a number of years ago. So, mega thrust estimated around a nine on a Richter scale, one of the strongest earthquakes recorded. The devastation killed more than a hundred thousand people and made most of the town homeless. The clash here comes from the scientific knowledge or lack thereof in that day. Earthquakes and a lot of other natural events were thought to be caused by and regulated by God. And that if a place had an earthquake or a tsunami or a flood or devastating fires or any number of natural events they must have been sinners God was judging them the problem with this is Lisbon was a cultural center in that time it was a Catholic nation it was one of the holier cities, um, I, I, I don't think it was holy in the, the terms like um, a lot of places in the Middle East. It was just uh, very, very religious. And the being a cultural center, um, even for, for back in that day, news spread fairly quickly about what happened and it caused a conflict. If God uses earthquakes to punish sinners, why Lisbon? Why such a good Catholic city and nation like Lisbon and Portugal? Why, why would God punish them with such a massive devastating earthquake? Um, it killed the majority of the people in the town. I think the estimated population was only about 180 to 200,000 at the time. So it, 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 it really devastated the area. Um, it caused a movement for people to think about why and how earthquakes could happen w without God. And it started sort of a revolution in thinking that maybe God doesn't have as big a role as they thought. So free thinkers started coming up with theories on how earthquakes happen without God. Other philosophers started questioning the whole thing. Um, 
two people I'm, I'm not going to go into, but if you want to look up two names, um, Voltaire and Immanuel Kant both have discussed the Great Earthquake at length. Some of them started ideas which eventually became seismology and the idea of plate tectonics. And of course now we know exactly what causes earthquakes. We don't chalk it up to uh, any god. Well, most logical people. Um, 700 Club idiots still blame God. So do some people that are running for president, but they're morons. Um, but what happened here puzzles me. The people started questioning their God, or their idea of God, and scrambled to try to find an excuse why their God couldn't have done this to them. And the culture very quickly latched onto a couple ideas explaining why God didn't do it. But then they stopped questioning when they had that excuse. And a lot of people didn't go any further. And that's the, that's the part that puzzles me. Um, I can relate to this event fairly well. Um, I don't think I've talked about this yet on my channel. In 1990, my hometown was hit by an F5 tornado. And somehow it only killed 27 people, even though there was no warning. In some spots, this tornado on the ground was three quarters of a mile wide. It didn't hit my house, but it hit my uncles, my grandparents, lots of friends. It went, it destroyed my, the grade school I went to, the church I was baptized in, the high school I was supposed to start the next day. And it killed someone very close to me. A, uh, my fifth grade teacher, Sister Mary Keegan. She couldn't find a student and ran back in to the school to find him. And that's when the tornado hit. I had been questioning the Bible and God for a very long time. But it was this event that sank it into me, sank into my mind that everything is essentially random. Our existence is basically the average of a random system. and. The, the quantum physics that goes into that is a little complex, but if you get enough random things happening, eventually you're going to get uh, a norm, an average on them. And that's pretty much what our existence is. It started a lifelong, so far, study of mine into all types of theology, what, what multiple cultures think of God and the science behind the way a lot of things work. So when I experienced a natural disaster, it set in motion a mechanism in my mind to this day that hasn't stopped. And it's never stopped questioning. And as I've explained, I, I don't believe in a Judeo-Christian idea of God. I don't rule out that there might be a some sort of a God-type being, 
because this universe is really, really big. So the most improbable thing is somewhere or has been somewhere just through sheer st statistics. Statistics. It's hard for me to say for some reason. So just by the sheer numbers, even the most improbable thing is going to happen sometime. So when the believer and the skeptic clashed in me, the skeptic won. But in 1755 in Lisbon, um, the majority's people belief was too strong. So as soon as they got an excuse on why this disaster could happen, they latched onto it and kept believing. Luckily, other people didn't. Other people kept trying to figure things out using the scientific method. And this is an example of what I talk about when being a believer can stop scientific progress. If everybody would have believed that, that there were giant gas-filled sacks underground and when one gets disturbed it rumbles and causes the earth to shake. Or there's a bunch, a number of ones, but that's not important. It, people would have never looked into seismology would have never looked into plate tectonics. And we wouldn't be able to make the small amounts of predictions that we can when it comes to earthquakes and volcanoes and assessing danger zones, making buildings safe and everything. Our defense for earthquakes would be to put a cross up and, and pray. But luckily, some people were skeptical and kept thinking. And that's my overall message in these, is that you, you can never allow yourself to stop thinking, stop questioning, until you get enough evidence where you can say, okay, I think I can believe that now. And I think I can reasonably convince somebody else. But you should still question everything. Because even commonly held beliefs, beliefs can be disproven. That happens all the time in physics. Something that we thought happened always happens a certain way. Everybody agrees this is the way it happens, and then a test shows, well, crap, it doesn't always happen that way. What does this mean? Like so many questioning what the speed of light that's going on right now. People believe Einstein like he can't possibly be wrong about everything. But he may have been. Have a nice day.